Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Scorpio new moon at 9 degrees 35 minutes on November 1st, 2024. Welcome. This new moon is in opposition to the Andromeda constellation and the fixed start to Tauin at 8 degrees 53 minutes, almost 9 degrees of Taurus. The ruler of this new moon is Pluto at the very last degree of Capricorn now at 29 degrees, 44 minutes. So it is really a culmination that we are witnessing here. And Pluto is in a long-term conjunction with the Lyra constellation and the fixed star Alatfar at zero degree of Aquarius. So this is really a, a significant time, a significant moment in time that we're witnessing here at this new moon. Just a quick announcement before we move into the galactic astrology of this new moon, the 2025 galactic astrology, a multidimensional energy forecast is now available. And if you're interested, check out the details in the description box below. What I do in these videos, I put a outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us connect with our multi-dimensional self, a bigger perspective of who we truly are. And this Scorpio new moon is one of those moments where we are going to witness a expansion, a call for stepping into something that we haven't experienced before. What you receive in this video are three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the new moon chart that I see are key to the energies that are influencing us at this time. And also at the end, you'll receive three questions should you want to integrate this Scorpio new moon energy some more. This new moon has a signature of an ending, but also a new beginning. And we have Pluto, the ruler of this new moon in opposition with Mars. Uh, in effect, from October 27th to November 13th, but a culmination here right around this new moon on November 2nd, a few hours, half a day after this full, a new moon, this new moon is a signature of culmination with Pluto here at 29 degrees, 44 minutes, going into Aquarius for the next 19 years until 2043 in on November 19th. Pluto as the ruler of this new moon is in opposition with Mars here. And with this energy signature comes a peak of some sort. And also this very prominent uh, Mars opposition at this time is a unique point of energy, a unique point of time that we likely will remember this energy signature comes with an intensity. It's almost like a wave of energy that's coming towards us to help culminate energy that has been in effect since Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008. So that is a culmination of a transmutation of energy. We have worked with a evolutionary energy for much longer than that. But Capricorn's signature and Pluto in combination with Capricorn has really highlighted our structures, our way of leading our own lives. Capricorn is a lot about structure in our lives, but also how we lead. And this is also a flashlight on ourselves at this time in terms of how we are leading our lives and how we are walking towards self-mastery eventually through Pluto's ingress here to Aquarius soon, we're going to step into a whole new way of energy to deal with. There is something here at this new moon that is bursting open and bursting open that is not going to stop. It's an evolutionary force that we are experiencing at this time that has significant impact on the future down the line. Part of this evolutionary force comes from the past and is a uh, culmination and 
uh, accumulation of energy that we have been carrying and sometimes feeling quite burdened and heavy by. But it's also for the benefit of the future where we are moving towards lightening the load in the physical plane in favor of lightness of collaboration with spirit. What we're experiencing here is the culmination of the old, but also that is required to be able to open up for a whole new way of living. This new moon in Scorpio is a very deep sign and a new moon, so it may not always feel as comfortable to deal with Scorpio energy, as we know, which is a, a very multifaceted energy, but also it is a requirement to experience some sort of culmination to really uh, get in touch with a new way, an opportunity that we haven't uh, considered before because it has been hidden. And now is the right time to get in touch with that, whether it's a ability of yours, whether it's an opportunity that you, is presented to you, whether it's a uh, shedding of the old and a uh, remarkable um, shift in some sort, either within yourself or within your life in the external world. So this culmination that this energy signature of this new moon particularly highlighted by Pluto opposite Mars here and Pluto conjunct Lyra Alatfar, which is an energy signature of courage, of liberation. And this long-term conjunction with Lyra Alatfar has, uh, is here for a reason. It's uh, a support, a evolutionary support for us and is a guidance also in terms of what we are asked to focus on, which is vibration, energy, and how we are moving towards self-mastery in terms of how we uh, move through life energetically. It's also a connection to our multidimensional self, which is way beyond the physical plane. And the realization here that we are so big, our soul is so big, it may be part of the realization that we are getting in touch with here at this new moon. Many of us at this time of the new moon will realize that our life force is really in the hidden parts of ourselves. And this is also Pluto's mission has been since 2008 to help us unearth this hidden treasure that we have within us and show us what it takes breaking down systems and ways of being that may have hindered us to connect with our true life force, our true kundalini energy. And this new moon is a culmination where we are going to be shown what we're made of. Uh, and that is to be able to be of freedom. Uh, and freedom is to be authentic. Freedom is to be exactly who we are, both on the inside and showing uh, others on the outside. So this has a very transformational signature to it with Pluto in the leading position here as the ruler of this new moon. So before we go into the new moon chart, I'd like to share what the energetic themes are. The first theme is ancient evolutionary force. And here we're going to talk about Andromeda Titauen and Alpha Centauri. The second theme is Lemurian Reminder. And here we're going to talk about asteroid Oceana and asteroid Hawaii and also Hydra Alphard. The third theme is significant time for the future. And here we're going to talk about the fixed star Hydra Alphard, but also a significant aspect pattern that is involving the supergalactic center. Just a quick announcement before we move into the galactic astrology of this new moon. The 2025 Galactic Astrology Energy Forecast is now available, and I have left a link in the description box below in case you want to check out the details. All right, let's take a look at the new moon chart next. So here we have the new moon chart where you can see the sun and the moon together there at 9 degrees 35 minutes in Scorpio, opposite Andromeda to Tauin. And we also have a sextile from the new moon to Lyra Alatfar, 
at 10 degrees of Capricorn. There's a lot of ancient wisdom here harbored as in association with this fixed star and in opposition to the new moon here. It is about coming into contact with that ancient part of ourselves where that wisdom is harbored. Everyone has ancient wisdom within ourselves at the very seed in our soul essence. It, there is immense ancient wisdom. And Andromeda Tatawan is here to help us balance and come into contact with that energy at this time. So I have also pulled in asteroid Atlantis here to this chart because Atlantis is now at 10 degrees of Libra, which is the solar eclipse uh, degree that we had on October 2nd. At that time, the solar eclipse was square to Lyra Alatfar. So that is uh, something just to just keep in mind as we go through this video. And here we have the roller Pluto at 29 degrees, 45 minutes, conjunct Lyra Alatfar here. And uh, Lyra Alatfar is calling us to bring out our sense of courage, our sense of liberation at this time. And this is a long-term conjunction that Pluto is having to Lyra Alatfar. So here we have Andromeda to Tawin. And Andromeda to Tawin is associated with the energy of the spiritual warrior, and it has a very ancient sage-like energy to it. And in opposition here with this new moon, it's helping us to balance and get in contact with that ancient wisdom that we all have within, associated with our soul essence. Andromeda Tatawin is also associated with boundaries. So in terms of establishing boundaries of who am I at this time is awakening with it within us. Scorpio uh, on the opposite side of Taurus is a very deep sign. So this combination with the new moon and Andromeda to Tawin in opposition here is a um, direct line between our ancient wisdom and our, the depths of ourselves. So here, this is a very beautiful opposition, I feel. This opposition between Andromeda to Tawin and the supportive sextile from Lara Alafar is a suggestion, an invitation for us to reach deep within ourselves, to connect with that ancient wisdom that we all have. And this may be a great support and source of energy at this time for us and a supportive energy through music, for example, through as part of this new moon, we are reaching deep for that spiritual warrior within ourselves. And that requires us to use our ancient wisdom that we all have and supported by music and tapping into vibration as a source of energy and upliftment and inspiration. That may be a great way to approach this new moon. So next, let's take a look at the first energetic theme, ancient evolutionary force. So here we have the first theme that I called ancient evolutionary force. And here we have a powerful grand water trine. And what's so powerful with this is not only that the degrees involved here uh, amongst the water element is 27 to 29 degrees of the water signs but also that we have two personal planets building this grand water trine together with Neptune. So what we have here are Mars at 29 degrees of Cancer, and we have Mercury at 28 degrees of Scorpio conjunct Centaurus Alpha Centauri, and we have Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces opposite the supergalactic center. What we also have, and what I pulled into this chart, is asteroid Hawaii uh, conjunct Mars here at 29 degrees of Cancer, exactly conjunct Mars. And also I have pulled in asteroid Oceana conjunct Mercury here at 29 degrees of Scorpio. So this is giving us a message what this grand water trine is all about. This grand water trine is clearly 
speaking to us through the natural elements of water, but also through the ancient ways of being, being integrated with spirit, approaching life from a very integrated spirit to earth, heaven and earth, so within, so uh, without, and so above, so below type of approach. And at this new moon, we may be uh, reminded of this natural universal force, evolutionary force that is currently guiding us through this grand water trine. So I want to share a little bit about asteroid Hawaii and asteroid Oceana with you before we move on into this theme. And the ancient lands of Lemuria is said to have existed about 300,000 years ago or more. And uh, it's uh, also associated with the Pacific Islands, Pacific Ocean. And Oceana is also named after the Pacific Ocean. So there's a theme here between these two asteroids at this new moon. And there's clearly a culmination, a point of highlight, a peak in uh, awareness around Lemuria and also Pacific Ocean is associated here. So this may be very interesting to dive deeper into at this time of the Scorpio new moon. But there's a second part to this theme that I'm going to show you next. When we speak about evolutionary force, it's part of the universe to evolve. And so are we. So with this grand water trine in mind, we have a number of squares that may take us out of our comfort zone at this new moon. And I'll walk you through what I see here. Neptune is making two longstanding squares, one to Orion Seif at 26 degrees of Gemini, and the other square is to Galactic Center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. This is part of the transmutation of polarity that Neptune has been overseeing and uh, uh, transmuting polarity as part of our own galaxy. Galactic center is our own wisdom driver, our own black hole. And there is a process that Neptune is part of uh, transmuting polarity and negative forces. And Mars is making two squares, one to Shapley Attractor and one to Andromeda Galaxy M31. M31 at 28 degrees of Aries and Shapley Attractor at 2 degrees of Scorpio. This uh, activation by Mars here is a very important multidimensional call for us to expand our perspective and reach further out than we have ever done before as far as relating to ourselves and others in a much bigger way, a multidimensional way. Mercury in Scorpio squaring Hydra Alphard is about reaching to the depths of our subconscious for that life force, our creative self that drives our uh, living existence here and uh, step into a greater use of that, uh, which often results in authenticity, being uh, transparent within and so without and uh, just be as we are when we use our creative life force energy. This is a very powerful set of squares that are meant for us to evolve. And it will be in motion at this new moon, supported by the harmonious Grand Water Trine. So here we are with a very complex and multi-layered energy force, an evolutionary force that is present here at this new moon. And this may be feeling like we're taking out of our comfort zone. Many of us have memories from lost civilizations or ancient life forms, not necessarily uh, in a certain location, but this energy signature archetypally is one of ancient evolutionary force. This is going to be set in motion by Mars and Mercury activating this grand water trine right around this new moon. 
So next, let's take a look at the second theme that I call Lemurian Reminder. So here we have the second theme that I called Lemurian Reminder. And here we are also going to focus on a multi-layered energy. And we start out first with what I call the box. <laughs> and the box here is made of our familiar Mars and Mercury trine here. But we also have a sextile to Uranus in Taurus, late degrees of Taurus in retrograde here, conjunct Perseus Algol at 26 degrees of Taurus. And a beautiful trine between Pluto and Uranus here in effect. And Pluto is, uh, as we said earlier, at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So usually this type of aspect pattern is a harmonious one. It, trines and sextiles are supportive energies. Uh, trines are inner uh, ease, if you will, often, and sextiles are external support often, can be interpreted like that. But there's more to this energy. Underneath the box type of energy that includes trines and sextiles, uh, supportive flowing energy, we have a T-square uh, between Mercury conjunct Centaurus Alpha Centauri here, opposite Uranus in retrograde conjunct Perseus Algol at 26 degrees of Taurus. And here uh, the T-square is to Hydra Alphard at 27 degrees of Leo. And as you know by now, Hydra Alphard is that life force. So there is another reminder here at this new moon to reach for that creative self, that what drives us, what it makes us uh, live, exist, and the evolutionary force behind that. This opposition between Mercury and Uranus is significant, specific Mercury's role here as a personal planet to activate, and Uranus is the higher aspect of Mercury. So here we have a relationship of up-leveling our communications, our uh, connectivity to our inner communication. In Scorpio here, it may also be to up-level our inner communication with our subconscious is the suggestion here. This opposition is very much suggesting an increase, a deepening of our inner conversation with our subconscious. Alpha Centauri here in the Centaurus constellation is associated with divination. And uh, this is a deepening of our way of approaching that subconscious communication, supported by Uranus in opposition here, conjunct Perseus Algol, which is that third eye of the Medusa's head. Here, we are invited to step out of the comfort zone. Hydra Alphard will be the driving force here. Uh, as part of our life force to bring us into this evolutionary shift. So here we have the Lemurian reminder with Oceana and Hawaii asteroids conjunct the personal planets Mars and Mercury. This is a reminder from ancient times to reach back for other ways of being that we may have forgotten. And just a few words about Hydra Alphard at 27 degrees of Leo here. Uh, what we're seeing here is a suggestion to balance our uh, light and dark energies. Basically, the masculine and feminine energies within us, but also polarity in our environment. It can be seen in very many different ways, but Hydra Alphard is that unified energy that is pure creativity and pure life force. This new moon is a call to deepen significantly, and we may also see evolutionary forces in our environment supporting us, even if it doesn't look like it's supporting us, but it is. It is a inner, outer evolutionary force that is in effect uh, at this time. And it's not just at the new moon, of course, but it's a peak that we're seeing here in that energy signature. Part of the overall message of this new moon is that we are asked to go deeper with ourselves and our experience here on Earth. 
at this time. And that depth can look very different for each person. What is this depth to you? What is it that is making you feel balanced? Ultimately, we are asked to be masters in balancing energy, the seen and the unseen, the inner, the outer, the upper and the lower. And the polarities that we are working with here in this physical plane, this is a significant call to go deeper with all of that. So next, let's dive into the third theme, a significant time for the future. And here we're going to take a look at a significant aspect pattern. Here we have the third theme that I've called a significant time for the future. And here we have the grand water trine that you recognize from theme one. And in addition to this grand water trine, we have some more aspects that I'm going to walk you through next. We also have three minor grand trines, whereof one has been in place for a long time. And that's the one in pink here, Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus. That minor grand trine in the late degrees of respective signs have been in place for a long time. Uranus conjunct Perseus Algol, Neptune, now opposite the supergalactic center, and Pluto conjunct Lyra Alat Far there. Now, we also have at this new moon two more minor grand trines activated by Mars and Mercury, respectively. As you can see here in green, Mars, Uranus, and supergalactic center, and also Mercury conjunct Centaurus Alpha Centauri, Lyra Alat Far and Pluto there, and Supergalactic Center. But there's more to this, <laughs> and it's getting a little bit complicated, but uh, let me walk you through what I see next. So here we have three more minor grand trines, and we have just turned the clock face a little bit, and now we have a minor grand trine with Supergalactic Center, Mercury and Mars here in green. And then we have Uranus, Mars, and Neptune. And then we have Mercury, Pluto, and Neptune in blue. So that's a lot to take in, right? <laughs> so taken together, we have an aspect pattern of multiple kites, let's say. It's a harmonious energy that just comes together and it's activated by Mars and Mercury's presence here. All the other points have been in place for quite a while. So let's focus on the supergalactic center here at two degrees of Libra for a moment and come back to the fact that asteroid Atlantis here at 10 degrees of Libra is present here at this particular degree, which was of the solar eclipse on October 2nd. Now, the solar eclipse in 2025 in September will be conjunct the supergalactic center at 29 degrees of Virgo. So this aspect pattern may be something that kicks off now and continues all the way to the next solar eclipse on September 21st, 2025, where the solar eclipse is going to take place at 29 degrees of Virgo there that would complete this aspect pattern. One thing to notice is that all of the components of this aspect pattern is in Earth or water, except the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra, which is in air. This is an invitation potentially into the element of air, which we are moving into the Aquarian age when Pluto is moving permanently now in November into Aquarius for 19 years. The supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra is also M87 in the Virgo constellation. And it's a black hole, a big universal driver of wisdom that we have access to and is very influential. In Libra, it has to do with integration of relationships, whether it's relationships to ourselves with others or any type of relationship. This supergalactic center energy at this time is very much associated with leading us into the future. 
this hexagon energy in late degrees of water and earth, but the supergalactic center is in air. So this has a very much a feeling and this energy signature to it of a new beginning. And the sun is rising here. So I just wanted to share that with you, that this energy, the supergalactic center is ushering us into the next phase of being here on earth. So here we have an energy signature of a major shift, an evolutionary force that is supporting us to make an evolutionary step, a uh, leap into our next phase of human way of living between now and September 2025, major shifts are going to happen. And if you're interested in learning more about 2025 galactic astrology and the energy forecast for next year, go check out that program in the description box below. So here we are at this Scorpio new moon with the presence of intense evolutionary forces and we are asked and invited to expand into new ways of approaching our life, which includes a multidimensional perspective. And this is evolutionary forces that are right on time. We are asked to flow, utilize that harmonious grand water trine and the harmonious box <laughs> of energy in here, but also to flow with the stretching that we are going to be asked to do, the stretching that the squares are providing us with in these charts, in this energy signature. We are bound to evolve. And over the next couple of years, there are major shifts coming. What is absolutely clear now is that the late degrees of water and earth are coming to a peak. The energy signature of the third deacon of the earth and water signs are speaking to relating to heaven and earth at the same time, an integration of that as a new life form. And this is very much reaching back to what ancient civilizations have taught us to exist within. So here we have an intersection between old, past, and new, and future. Enjoy this new moon. And I have a couple of questions should you want to integrate this Scorpio new moon energy some more. The first question is, how do you tune into the evolutionary energies that are ongoing? And this is a question that speaks to how do you tune into your subconscious? Because evolutionary energies are very subtle and they cannot be learned. They have to be felt and experienced within. So how do you do that? And everyone does that in a different way. Everyone is designed to experience their inner subconscious differently. Find out and strengthen your way of experiencing these evolutionary forces. How can you strengthen the way you are tuning into these evolutionary forces. One way of tuning into them is to tune into nature and spending time in nature. The second question is, how do you balance energy? And to begin with, that is an inner journey, how you can stay balanced in your own life. But then it becomes an integration to uh, the outer experience of life as well. But this is a contemplation that may take a couple of times in terms of where are you uh, on that journey of balancing your own energy. Part of self-mastery is to come to that union of masculine, feminine energies within, but also that integration of the outer experience. And this is what Hydra Alphard is helping to guide us to be masters in. The third question is, how does this hexagon pattern that you saw in theme three, how does that apply to your own chart? And you don't have to be an astrologer to identify that. But if you have planets and points in the late degrees of water and earth signs, you likely are part of the flow here in this culmination that we are 
experiencing as part of our evolution. So how uh, does that apply to you and how, what conclusions are you drawing uh, in your own life, how that energy is affecting you at this time? I hope you enjoyed this Scorpio new moon video. I can't wait to come back with a new video for you soon and check out the 2025 Galactic Astrology program. It's available now and there's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for listening and watching to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Visit me on ulrikasullivan.com. Bye.